If you're enjoying this introduction to Revit, make sure you check out the full beginner to advanced level course on my website, s15studio.com. So in the build panel, we have floor, we'll select floor. So when we place certain components, we'll get a different contextual tab. You'll see that the color is different. It's more of a blue than a green. And we have this additional box here, which is the mode box. So we have green tick, red X. So when we finish our modeling, we must, we must green tick to finish or red X if we want to cancel everything. In the draw panel, we have the ways which we want to draw it. We just use a boundary line. Are we creating a slope or are we identifying the span direction? So for now, we're going to stick with the boundary line. And here are the ways in which we can add in our floor. Some similar as before by line, rectangle and so on. But we want to use some additional tools for this. We have the option of pick line, which we'll, we can use, apply it to the inner line of this wall. But we have a new tool here, which is called pick walls. When we use the pick walls tool, all we have to do is pick the actual walls we want to apply the floor to. And why this is important comes down to our cores. So our floor has a core which will attach to the core of the wall. So this will keep all of our structure correct. So what we're going to do is we'll choose the pick walls. In our options bar, we can apply an offset if we need. And we have extend into the wall core, which is ticked on. So we want that on for now. I will show you this without that turned on, where the floor doesn't extend into the core. So in the properties, we have our type selector and the properties attached to that. In the property, in the type selector, what I want you to use is the ground floor bearing slab. So we have another ground floor slab, which is a suspended floor slab. We also have two upper floor types. So we'll choose floor ground bearing. You can see our level we're on ground floor, which is correct. And using the pick walls tool, what we need to do is just Select the wall, working our way around, selecting the external walls. And once done, we'll just press escape. So when we press escape, we can continue pressing escape, but you'll notice we don't come out of the create floor boundary. We have to press X or green tick. But before we do, I'll just zoom in. So our boundary line is the pink line. That is the boundary of our floor. And you'll notice it's on the external face of our block work. So our floor will be underneath that block work and the block work is built off the edge of that slab. What we can do when selecting, we have a flipping arrow. So we can flip that floor to the inner side. So the block work will then run straight down to the foundations. So depending on what build up you're using, this is where you'd make those changes. So we'll keep the floor slab to the outer side of that core. Selecting again, we can also add in an offset if needed. So if you wanted to extend the floor slab out, we can do that by using the temporary dimensions. We can also pick, drag and drop bring it back into its position. So there we placed our floor slab. We just press green tick to finish. And we will get this pop up. So the floor slash roof overlaps the highlighted walls. Would you like to join geometry and cut the overlapping volume out of the wall? So this means that our floor is cutting into our wall. It's cutting away that block work. And do we want the block work to sit on top of the floor slab? and also underneath, which yes, we do. So now we have our floor slab in place. Go to our 3D view, and there we can see the slab. So to show you the floor cutting into the wall, we'll come to the quick access toolbar at the top. Here we have the section view. So one click of the mouse will activate the section view. And all we do is we click once at the top 
drag right down to the bottom click again and our view is currently facing to the right hand side and anything in this dashed box is what will be displayed i want to go the other side so we'll hit the flip arrow so now anything inside this box it will be displayed we can still pick up that section line and move it to where we want we can also minimize what's shown in so if it's not inside the dash line it won't be displayed but we want all of that to be displayed we can also expand it out in the opposite direction so once we've done that there's two ways we can open up our section view we can either go to the project browser and we now have a sections section and there's our section one or we can just double tap on the beak of the section just expand out our levels so they're not in the way so there's a section view through our building to show more detail of this we come down to our detail level increase that to fine and there's our external wall so our block work is cut back and there is the structural floor and then on top of that we have the insulation and screed so those components are not structural so they're cut back looking for the structural floor slab so there it is joined together if i increase that to realistic we can see a clear picture so there's the block work so there's our block work sitting on our concrete slab same on the other side you can come back and if i just extend and pull the section view back cutting through one of the internal partitions here we can see on the section view that our internal partition is actually going past our ground floor level down to the ground level this is because we didn't change those internal walls to sit on the ground floor so we can go back to our ground floor plan we can select one of the internal partitions holding control i can select all partitions coming over to my properties we have our base constraint on the left hand side change that over to ground floor and coming back to the section we see it now sits on top of the floor we can see that there for the inner wall as well which is here so we can either come back to the ground floor change the base constraint over to ground floor or we can select it in the section view and change it there so coming back to the ground floor plan at the beginning of the course i showed you some of these selection toggles and what i want to look at is the select element by face now that we have a floor inserted into our drawing as it's active when we come into our floor plan we know that our floor is here so when i hover in we see that the that the boundary of that floor slab is highlighted in blue so if i click inside the building we're able to select the floor but during our modeling process this can get in our way so if we come back to our selection toggles select element by face turn it off now when i come into my floor plan we can see we can no longer select the floor slab so i'm clicking inside the building and i cannot select the floor slab next we're just going to place a footpath around our building and we want our footpath to be on the ground level not the ground floor so we're currently on our ground floor plan we'll come back to our project browser there's our ground level so double tap that to open up the ground level next we'll come to our floor tool select it and in our properties type selector we want to edit this one and create our own because we don't want to have insulation or a screed in our floor type so it's not necessary to have a floor build up for the inside of a house on the outside so we'll select edit type and the first thing we'll do is select duplicate and in the name we're going to delete out the two at the end 
and we can change the name. So we'll highlight the floor ground bearing, highlight that, change it to path. We'll delete out the 65 mil screed and the 90 mil insulation. We want to keep the concrete. We want to keep the 50 mil sand or, or build up and as well the 150 mil hardcore and we'll press OK. So what we've done is we've duplicated it and given it a new name. We then have to go, we now have to go and to remove the screed and insulation from our floor buildup. And how we do that is in our construction heading of the parameters, there's our structure. We'll click on edit. And in here is our edit assembly. Down the bottom left, we have our preview. So one click will open that and we see a nice preview of our floor. To the bottom of that, we have how we can view it. So it's currently in section mode. So coming up to the top, we have the titles of this floor. So we have family, it's under the floor family. The type is we've just renamed that to path, 125 concrete, 50 mil buildup of sand, 150 mil hardcore. The total thickness is 480. The resistance value is 2.9 and the thermal mass is 298.15. Those values are calculated by inputting the data into each one of these functions. We will go into more detail in that later on when we create our own, but we won't go into that detail at this moment. So coming down to our layers panel, which is here in the middle. So we have the headings of function, material, thickness, wraps, structural material, and variable. So under the function are the headings. So first we have our finish. Within our functions, they are organized from top to bottom. So what, what's right at the top of the function is the first in our preview and our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So under the function heading, this is where we apply what type of function that material does. So is it a structure, substrate, a thermal or air layer? Finish one, finish two. So finish one and finish two would be the external or internal finishes. Then we have membrane layer. So for our vapor control barriers and last is a structural deck. So taking the first one there, we have finish one, which is our outer finish. And it's showing that it's concrete. So there's our concrete screed. And the thickness is 65 mil. Next, we have a membrane. And that's the vapor barrier. So that would be in between these here. As it's just a thin line, we don't visibly see that. And it's noted down as zero in thickness. Next is the thermal air layer, which is our rigid insulation at 90 mil. So there we have it there. Then coming down, we have core boundary above and we have also core boundary below. So here, number four, core boundary. So the core boundaries will always be in your layers and core boundaries are very important when we're creating our floors, walls and roofs. So when we, when a wall will connect to a floor or a roof, what they're, what they're looking for are the core boundaries. So when we were creating our walls, our block looked for the core boundary and it joined to the other block. It completely ignored the brick cavity and insulation and it just looked for the block work and they joined together. Same when we joined our wall to the floor, it cut through the concrete screed, the insulation, and it looked for the core boundary of the concrete slab and that's what joined together. So there are core boundaries. And within that core boundary, is our concrete slab. So there is our 125 concrete slab. And then below that core boundary, we have another membrane, another damp proof membrane. Then we have our sand substrate and our site hardcore. So as the damp proof membrane, the sand and the hardcore are not within the boundary, they're below the boundary. If we were to connect another wall underneath this, the wall boundary would cut through the hardcore and the sand and connect directly to the concrete slab. And for this task, as we're creating a new floor type, which is our path, we need to remove some of this information. So we removed the 
concrete screed so we'll select it we'll come down delete we don't need a membrane or vapor barrier so we'll delete that as well we don't need the rigid insulation and we'll delete that if we wanted to insert a new material we'll choose the insert button here and if we wanted to move a material up or down the list we'll select it and we can then move it up and down with these buttons here so for now we'll press ok we'll then come back into our type parameters there's our function we'll change that over to exterior as it's now an external floor type and all other information for now is correct we'll press ok we're back in our drawing there's our new floor type and we're going to draw this one a little differently than the internal floor slab because the internal floor slab is structural and will and we'll look for the boundary of the walls but when we're placing a footpath around the building it isn't structural so it doesn't actually connect to our building so we don't use the pick walls what we could do is we could choose the line tool and just draw our line around but this can take some time so what we will do today is use the pick lines tool and we first must place the inner boundary around the building we'll then offset it out to create our footpath so we'll choose pick lines so now we'll select all of the external lines just making sure i select the wall and not the threshold of the door and i pressed escape to come out of that so when we're creating a boundary and this applies to everything when we're creating a floor stairs or a roof a boundary line can only be a single joined line what i mean by that is if our boundary must be only one line in one single joined entity as we can see here we have our lines coming around but we have this additional line here so if i try to finish that and close it down i'm going to get a pop-up saying that there's an error lines cannot intersect each other the highlighted lines currently intersect so it will give you a preview in orange of where the issue is so what we do is we select continue and we just trim this corner using the trim and extend And just to double check everything what you can do is put your cursor over one line press the tab key and if it selects all of the lines it means that those lines are in a closed loop and the boundary is okay so we've now placed the inner boundary of our footpath what we need to do is offset that out and create our footpath around so what i'll do is i'll select my pick lines again this time I'll come to my options bar and there is my offset tool. I'm going to offset it out by 2000 or two meters. And I'll select the top, the left, the lower and to the right. Press escape. What I don't want to do is to select these lines here as I want to make a complete rectangle around the building. So I just need to trim and extend this corner here. And again, I can hover over, press tab, and I get a complete loop. So as we've drawn two shapes, the floor will infill in between those two shapes. So when we press green tick, the floor is now placed. Press escape, come into our 3D view, and there is our footpath. Comes all the way around the building. And if I select it, it's not connected to the inner floor if i select the floor you see it's not connected to the path come into the section view and there we can see our footpath and there's our concrete slab and the core boundary was set to the top so it will come to the level so i'll just i'm going to come over and change back to hidden line as we don't want that to be running all the time come back to my ground floor plan 
Okay, so we'll save our project and I want to close down ground level so it doesn't get in the way. I'll turn on my turn off select elements by face and save the project.